We got a trade alert for you. We got our Jason Snipe trimming his position in NVIDIA and Palo Alto. Jason, explain this one to us. A lot of people are trying to ride that AI wave. You're actually jumping ship a bit. Yeah, Frank, and, and I think the bid is, is, is a very important piece uh, of the story, right? So we we're, we're still have a lot of conviction on both of these names. Apollo Alto is up 76 percent year to date. You know, NVIDIA is up over 189 percent year to date. So this is a story is just prudent, re, you know, trying to manage our risk going forward. Obviously, you know, the, these we're, are, we're still you know, there's still very strong core positions for us. You know, we, we still very much believe in the stories as it relates to AI and cybersecurity and the, the ongoing tailwinds there. But for us, with, with names that have run this far, we thought it was appropriate to take a little bit off the table. So we did. And again, part of our quarterly rebalance story, okay. nothing changes for us in terms of the fundamental tailwinds here. So, Jason, nothing wrong with a little bit of profit taking, but I want to ask you, where do you see the risk? I'm looking at the notes this week. Goldman saying the Palo Alto is their really their top pick when it comes to cybersecurity, forecasting better than expected margin expansion in that space. And then Wells out with a note that NVIDIA it actually has an underappreciated part of its business, its Ethernet platform business. I know it's at a high multiple, but where do you see the risk when it comes to these names? So, uh, you know, clearly the, the S&P, you know, the, the multiple in the S&P is close to 19 times forward, right? So as I, as I looked towards the, the rest of this year, and again, you know, as, if I pick on Palo Alto as an example, you know, they, they've achieved profitability. You know, EPS growth is up, up, up above 85 percent. Revenue growth is above 25 percent. I really like the sticky business that they're doing with government contracts. But I just believe that when you see a stock run this much in the short run, again, we're only six months, you know, close to wrapping up the sixth month of the year above 70 percent. It's time to take some off the table. And that's that's really what we would call sell discipline. Doesn't change our perspective on this stock or NVIDIA as an example with the fundamental tailwinds from AI and generative AI, the chips, the GPU chips. We believe in these stories, but we just felt right. that it was appropriate to take a little bit off the table, take some profits, and look to elsewhere, other parts of the market where we might see some upside. You know, Jason, in all fairness, you are not the only one. You're actually kind of following the money. I know it's your idea, but you're following the money. Rob Seachin, biggest outflows from tech in the last 10 weeks. So a lot of people are thinking the way Jason's thinking. By the way, did I tell you, you your color coordination today is I was going to tell you the same excellent. thing. You, who's your stylist? <laughs> David August. <laughs> so um, let me say this. It's no surprise. We trimmed our Microsoft last Thursday on, on, on the show for similar reasons. Valuations are getting a little stretched. So let me put right. some meat on the bone there. Okay. Um, the tech sector is trading at 28 times forward earnings. This is back to the pre-pandemic peak. That's a big deal. People have to pay attention to that. It's a 45% premium to the market with a 10-year average of a 9% premium and a 35% peak premium at the end of 21. Last stat, for reference, during the tech bubble, 53% premium. So we're right there right. in terms of premium. So understand AI enthusiasm. Understand everything that's happening in this space. Don't understand the disconnect from real rates, frankly, because tech and interest rates have traded lockstep for a while. So in our mind, at what point does the market start paying attention to the Fed? The Fed's over there bound, pounding the drum. Pay attention. Rates are headed higher. That means real rates are likely headed higher. And, and frankly, I think these stocks are a little expensive. Now, they're in an uptrend. Still, obviously, 50. Uh, we, we are still 7% uh, above the 50 day moving average. And that gives you some sense for the magnitude of the move that we've seen in tech. So I think there's going to be a digestion period probably here, very short run. We'll test that 4,200 level on the S&P. If we bounce up, I think we have more room to run. All right. If we don't, you know, we'll see what happens. It, right. it, it'd take an event to get there. Digest, I think, is the word there. Another word used was bubble. A lot of people think this whole thing's a bubble. Jim, I mean, would you take some money off the table right now, or do you want to just let it ride some more? What, what are you defining as this thing when you say this thing might be a Ma bubble? We are call you, it, we call it, it Magnificent market? Seven. Okay. I mean, I know Palo Alto's okay. not in that group, but they've certainly been a beneficiary. Okay, so we're talking about tech, not the markets overall. Not the markets overall. We're talking tech. Uh, coming off of Jason Snipes' trade, 
getting taken some money off the table, a bit of money off the table when it talks to Palo Alto and then NVIDIA, one of those magnificent yeah. seven stocks we've been talking about. I mean, listen, let's just make this really simple. NVIDIA is up 190 percent in six months. Um, that's really, really appropriate to trim. And Jason's very, very smart. He's got an investment thesis. He sees, sees long-term value in NVIDIA, so he's not selling the whole position. But by definition, if he held it from the beginning of this year, it's gotten pretty darn big in his portfolio. He's doing the prudent thing, both from portfolio management perspective and from where the stock is perspective.